tell them it won't work. do your hands like this. You got to convince yourself. Father, we thank you today. We give you honor and we give you praise. If it had not been for you who was on our side, the enemy would have swallowed us up. But thanks be unto God who always causes us to triumph in him. Your mercies are renewed every morning. Great is thy faithfulness unto us. I have not seen, ear have not heard Neither has it entered into the hearts of man the things that you have in store for us. But we bow in your presence. We bow in your presence. Now, God, do what only you can do. Hide us behind the cross. That they won't see me, but they'll see you. experience your power in this place on today. Somebody needs to hear from you. Not from Pastor V, but they need to hear from the Holy Spirit. Somebody's ear is inclined to hear. God, speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Speak, Lord, for thy servant heareth. Now, God, have your way in this place. We'll be careful to give your name all the glory and all the praise. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. And every glad heart say amen. Amen. something unto the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. If he brought you out of anything, you ought to give him a praise. If he opened any door for you, you ought to give him a praise. If he dismissed some folk out of your life, you ought to give him a praise. Because if we be true about it, everything that we've experienced in the last two years almost took us out.
We had to re-regulate our mind and rethink our thoughts because it seemed like we were losing all the time. <laughs> it almost seemed like we should have gave up. But when we look at it with our natural eye, we would have stopped in our tracks. But how many of you know you got to look with a spiritual eye? So you can look at the things that are happening in the world that are coming against you. But what you see is what God has already planned after this. I have to testify for a quick moment. I was in a meeting last week and I was doing a presentation on my theological journey. And I was reminded of the pro first prophetic word that I ever received. The whole time I was trying to put my presentation together, I couldn't even think of how it went. But I used to listen to it every day, Apostle. Every day I would listen to that prophetic word because it was the first one I ever received. I listened to it so much till I got it into my spirit and I can recite it at the drop of a hat. But over time, and after going through pressure, some of the words begin to leave me. Uh-huh. But the one thing I remember was that God said I would speak as the oracles of God. And if I didn't have nothing else to hold on to, Pastor Sean, I had that to hold on to. When I couldn't remember the rest of it, I said that to say this to somebody out there. You might have forgotten what God told you to do and what God has said for you that was going to come to pass. But I'm telling you to go back and grab whatever he said because he ain't saying for no reason. There is purpose in his plan. Lord have mercy, help me today. He didn't say it to put a period on it. But he had a dot, 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 dot after it. Holy Ghost, help me. That dot, dot, dot means it's still continuing to, to manifest itself. <laughs> I said that dot, dot, dot after that is saying that it's continuing to manifest itself. You weren't ready back then. But you ought to look at your neighbor and say, I'm ready, I'm ready. I'm ready for whatever God got for me today. If you believe that, come on and give God some praise. It won't work. Get your Bibles. I'm going I'm to do this and we can get out of here. Look at your neighbor and say, the Holy Ghost is real. It won't work. It won't work. Lord have mercy. God help me. Let me do this right quick because God told me to tell there's somebody out here today. to put it down in my notes because sometimes I get forgetful when I get caught up. God said there's somebody here today that I've been trying to put things into your hands and you have been rejecting it thinking that you are not worthy. But God said when I called you I already saw you as being worthy. You, you, you forgot about the first call. You've been seeking after me, but yet you still feel stagnant and feel like you can't move into what God has called you to do. If I got somebody, I want everybody to close their eyes. I want to do this real quick. If that's you, I just want you to slip your hand up. Mm-hmm, I see you. 
He's been calling you and calling you and calling you and calling you. And you have been rejecting the call because you feel inadequate. You feel like you don't have enough. But God said, whatever I put in you, all I'm doing is germinating it right now. I'm just germinating it. I want, somebody, I want you to be bold, whoever this is. And come down and stand. I, it, it, it doesn't matter who's looking at you. God wants to set, solidify something in you today. You just come. Mm -hmm. And I know the enemy is, is mad because God has put so much in you that if he reveals it. <laughs> Yo, yes, sir. If he begins to reveal it, there's some folk that ain't going to be able to, Mama ain't going to be able to stand beside you no longer. There's, come a, there's coming a refreshing, mm -hmm. uh, a fresh anointing that's falling on you even this day. This very day, God said, and from this day forward, you will start to receive what he had planned for you all along. Because sometimes we get distracted. We go in there in the word on today. We get distracted, and because of the distractions, we fall away from where God is really trying to take us to. But God needs you to say, here I am, Lord. <laughs> use me. In that prophecy that I received, God said that he knew the desire that I had to be used of him. And there's you that are standing before me now have said the same thing. That you desired to be used of him. Can I come down off the stage for a moment? I promise I'm going to preach and we're going to go home. God said, you ain't even begin to see what I am nurturing in you. You thought it was something simple. <laughs> but God said, I'm getting ready to open up doors that no man can shut. And yes, there are some doors that have to close. I'm sorry. But when I open up these doors this time, I just need you to be ready. And being ready is having a prostrate of receiving whatever, whatever God you have for me, it is for me. No longer be discouraged because thinking that somebody else can do it better than you. God said, what I have for you is for you. And it ain't, I know I'm talking to somebody else all at the same time. But it's for you, God said. I've anointed you to do what I said I was going to anoint you to do. I didn't leave it behind. I didn't leave it abstract. I left it for a season. It's your new season. said you thought you failed mm -hmm. but he said a promise is a, my yada boshia say a promise my yada boshia a promise is a promise what i spoke into your spirit many mama masia ta yada boshia many moons ago I was just stirring it up <laughs> to see how much you trusted. 
God said, but today, my, 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 no more doubt. No more destruction. God said, all that you, my, 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 that the canker worms and the palmer worms have taken from my, God said, I'm getting ready to replenish it in the name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Your worship, yeah. It really did save your life. Yeah. I was lost and couldn't see my way. But when God touched my life, he redirected everything that was going out of order. God said, I started something in you when you was a little baby. People said you weren't going to never be nothing. Uh-huh. Nothing was supposed to change in your life according to them. But God said, every gift that I give is perfect. God said, just walk into your new season. That every step, I'm out here, no, you got to walk with authority. You got to walk like, like it belongs to you. Like it belongs to you. God showed me you first. Although you have all the educational, <laughs> I'll say genre. That's the word that comes to me. But he takes the <laughs> he takes the foolish things to confine the wise. God said, in this season, you'll no longer sit at the back. You'll never take another back seat to anything that he has designed. See, God designs stuff specifically for us. And when he designs it just for us, can't no devil in hell stop you from where you're getting ready to go. Come here, man of God. Hold on, hold on. Don't run to don't run yet. Press your hand right on the stomach. Uh -huh. God said, every bit. Every unction that I have put in my my put inside of you. Look for it in the days to come that it shall manifest and not lie, but it shall speak and not lie. God said, I'm bringing you to a new place, a new realm. Not only of doing things. But a new realm of thinking. God said, every thought that you thought wasn't going to happen, God said, I'm getting ready to bring it. He said, I'm talk, starting to close up these ears uh -huh, to those people that said it would never be, you would never be, you would, that you would ne never be nothing. God said, I'm stopping up your ears to hear that negativity. God said, I'm speaking life to you right now. Life, life and more abundantly. Life, life, life. And more abundantly. Nobody's seen the struggles. The struggles I've seen. You know what I'm talking about? Can't think of it right now. Nobody told me yeah. that the road would be and I That's it. don't yes, sir. believe uh -huh. he's brought me this far to lead me. I said, listen, listen.
never are the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. God said, if I promise, sometimes we think we should be out of the cocoon. And then we get out a little bit, just a little bit too early. <laughs> but God says, I'm rewrapping you. I'm reshaping you. I'm re-solidifying you. That when you stand the next time, it won't be about accolades and it Oh, God, we're going to the word in a minute. We, it's not going to be about accolades, but it's going to be about my struggles that God brought me through. He said, I'm doing it just for you. Just for you. Father, we brought in this Thank you for the potter's wheel. <laughs> Thank you for marred clay. That you can reshape and re remanifest so that when they stand, it'll still be a marred vessel, but it'll be to your glory. Thank you now for the order steps. Move on her behalf like never before. We give you all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' name. Ain't over yet. It's, it's a new season. Sometimes it looks like the end is near. But God said it ain't over till I my yodaboshia till I say it's over. So lift up your head, all ye gates. And be ye lifted up, you everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. God said, just open my emotion. Just open the door and I'll show up. Get your word real quick. We're going to the Bible. Second Corinthians chapter number four. Beginning at verse eight. weapon. No weapon formed. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 beginning at verse 8. I'm going to read through verse 9 then I'm going to skip down to verse 16. The A clause and then we'll close out with verse 17 through 18. Is that alright? Can we give God praise one more time? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God said his word will not return unto him void. But he'll do just what he sent it out to do. All you got to do is receive it. Verse number eight. We are hard pressed on every side. Yet not crushed. We are perplexed. But not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Verse 16, the eight calls, therefore we do not lose heart. Verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we do not look at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are, inter are eternal. I'd like to use for a subject today, enough is enough. 
Subtopic is, I might be down, but I'm not out. You may have your seats in this holy and sanctified moment. Enough is enough. In this season that we have been experiencing, it's been a season of a lot of uncertainty and confusion. Anxiety and stress have been at an all-time high. We've seen decrease in all areas of life that we could not imagine, all while trying to hold on to our faith. Do I have any witnesses in here today? Has your faith been challenged during this pandemic? We've had so many Christians and people of other faiths walk away from their beliefs, wondering if there is a God at all. There are some that are challenging the love of God. And even if he is God at all. Paul reminds us that though we may think we are at the end of our rope, we are never at the end of hope. Our earthly bodies are subject to sin and suffering, but God never abandons us. He, he never leaves us alone. Matter of fact, in his word, he said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I will be with you even until the end of the world. Paul had faced suffering after suffering and distress as he preached the good news. And some of you have been witnessing everywhere you go, and even though you're witnessing, people still are persecuting you on every side. I, I, I warn you today that don't take that to heart. That is supposed to happen. Uh, uh, the, if, they're, if they're talking about you and stabbing you in your back while you're giving them the good news, you're in the right place. Mm -hmm. But he knew that one day, that his trials would be over and that he would obtain God's rest and rewards. As we face great troubles, it's easy to focus on the pain rather than to focus on the goal. I, when, you are, when you are wrapped up in stuff that's happening day in and day out and, and, and struggle after this and struggle, it seems like nothing is coming to a, a naught. It's easy to get your focus off point. It's easy to get distracted by what you see and what you don't see. I, I, I can remember when we first had the pandemic hit, there was so many people that were unknowing. Uh, the doctors didn't know. The, 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 the hospitalists didn't know. The RNs didn't know. Everybody that I went to to get information had no idea what was going on. And, and it was easy to get distracted from everything that was being said. But God wants us to know that we can't look at what's going on in the world. Some of us are still struggling with the pandemic because we've lost jobs, we've lost uh, uh, income, we've lost things that we didn't never think that we are going to lose. But God said, don't worry about that right now. There's going to be days that are going to come where I'm going to replenish the earth. And things that were set aside and taken away, God said, I'm going to give you double for your troubles. We got to understand that the troubles are not to destroy us, but it's to bring us to a point of knowing that without God, we would never make it. It's in him I live. It's in him I move. It's in him that I have my very being. Paul could have begun his message with accolades of himself and talk about how wonderful of a preacher he was and how many souls have been saved under his anointing and how many times he has gone and given good words to everybody. But instead, he starts this message off with, we have this treasure. <laughs> Uh-huh, this substance in us. And, and that's why you can't give up on what God has already told you that was going to come to pass because you've got a substance on the inside that won't let you quit. You ought to look at your neighbor and say, don't quit, baby. Don't count me out. Don't count me out. I'm in for the long haul. It is the excellence of the power of God that may be in him and not of us. 
Instead of sharing his greatness, he shares his vulnerabilities, but not as a being defeated, he changes his language. And knowing that whatever he's going through, it didn't take him out. I don't know what you're going through right now, but you ought to know the, the reason that you're still here is because God still has purpose for your life. Everything that came against you wasn't here to kill you. It wasn't even to make you stagnant. It was to bring you to a place and a knowledge of knowing that God, if God be for you, he's more than the world against you. Although it happened to you, you ought to tell somebody, but I'm still here. I, I say, I'm still here. I, I will live and not die and, and declare the works of the Lord. I'm still here because God has put something in me. And when he put something in me, he said it can't go away because he sent his word to heal. He sent his word to deliver. He sent his word to break free. He sent his word that I might know him in the pardon of my sins. It, if, if God is so faithful in all that he does, then we have to be faithful in all that we do. If, if God is saying, although you might go through some stuff, we still got to change our language. We don't, can't no longer be the victim. We can't keep talking about, well, he, I, he didn't do it for me, but he did it for you. It, it didn't work out for me, but it worked out for you. He gave, me, gave you victory, but I'm still waiting on my promise. You can't continue to say that, but you got to say that God, maybe I got persecuted, but I didn't get cast out. I, I might have got uh, discouraged, but I'm still got my right mind. You ought to be able to tell God something. I wish I had a sanctified church. Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm still here. Uh, the enemy thought he was going to take me out with my with my mind, uh, but I'm still here. Uh, he thought he was going to take me out with sickness, uh, but I'm still here. Uh, he thought he was going to take me out with my friends leaving me on the wayside, uh, but I'm still here. Uh, he thought he was going to discourage me by not giving me that job, uh, but I'm still here. Uh, I thought he was going to change my mind uh, and get me to go against God. God, uh, because everything didn't work out the way I thought it was. Everything that God had promised and hadn't manifested yet, but I'm still here. I'm still pressing my way to get to him. I'm still looking for him to show up in my life. I'm still working on my soul salvation. I, I'm still trying to lift him up. I, I'm still trying to be encouraged uh, because when I'm encouraged, then I can believe a little bit further. I'm going to give you three points and I'm going home. Paul tells them a couple of things that was going on actually in his life. But he tells them in his message that there are some things that are going to come against you. But you can't let what's coming against you take over you. Ah, uh, he said, we are hard pressed uh, on every side, but you got to remember that you're not crushed. <laughs> We are perplexed, but you got to remember, but not in despair. You are persecuted, but you got to remember that you are not forsaken. You are destroyed, I mean struck down, but you are not destroyed. He says it twice in this passage of scripture from verse 1 all the way down to verse 18. He tells them twice not to lose heart because sometimes when we get in situations, we believe that things are going to go the wrong way. And, and when we get in those things, in those situations, we allow our emotions to take over. We allow our stinking thinking to take over and then begin to tell ourselves that it ain't going to happen. How many of you are still waiting on a promise? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still waiting on God to promise, but I'm still going to stand still until I see the salvation of the Lord. I, I can't give up on the promise because he said if he promised it, he's got to bring it to pass. And, and so if you got anything that God has told you that it was going to come to pass and it hasn't manifested itself yet, uh, you ought to hold up your hand and say, God, I'm ready to receive it. Uh, and what he does is he doesn't look at your outward appearance, uh, but God begins to search your heart uh, to find out if you really mean what you say. Paul tells them uh, 
to be not discouraged because there's going to be some things that are going to come in your life. But while these things are coming in your life, the first thing you need to check is your heart. What is my heart feeling like while this is all going on? Are my emotions and my feelings causing me to go in the wrong direction? Because anytime somebody begins to talk negativity to you and you invite it into your ear gate and, and into your spirit, you will begin to doubt what God has already called you to. Uh, but if I got any real sanctified folk that know if God has already put something in me, uh, that it's just a day, it's just a day that it's going to mature and it's going to come to fruition. Uh, I wish I had somebody to stand up on your feet and say, it's me, oh Lord, uh, standing in the need. Uh, I'm waiting on you to show up. Uh, I'm waiting on you to give me victory. I'm waiting on you to open my eyes uh, so that I can see it coming my way. Uh, I'm looking into the heels from which cometh my help, uh, knowing that it comes uh, from you. Uh, we got to check our emotions and our feelings uh, so that they don't overtake us and, and put us in a bad position. The second thing he uh, notes here is that you got to check your vision. Uh, it's easy to focus on things uh, that are coming at you all at the same time. Uh, you ought to tell, I heard a song earlier, uh, tell the devil, what was it? Tell him it won't work. <laughs> You got to tell the devil it won't work. But, but while you're looking with your vision, uh, you can't just look with your natural eye. Uh, but you've got to begin to ask God to show you in the spirit. Uh, because if you continue to look through your natural vision, uh, you won't see the end, but you'll see the middle where you're still standing. Uh, I can't look from where I came from any longer. Uh, now I've got to look to where God is trying to take me. Uh, and the third thing I say to you before I close uh, is that you got to celebrate your victories. <laughs> It's easy to get distracted when you're being hard-pressed. It's easy to get distracted when you are confused. It's easy to get distracted when you are struck down. But every time you realize that you have overcome trouble, you ought to celebrate. And every time you overcome being crushed, you ought to celebrate. And every time you become overcome being knocked down, you ought to celebrate. Celebrate being hard-pressed, but not crushed. Uh, celebrate being perplexed uh, but not in despair uh, celebrate being persecuted uh, but not forsaken uh, celebrate being struck down uh, but not destroyed look at your neighbor and say neighbor oh neighbor uh, enough uh, is enough uh, don't count me out of the equation uh, I might be struggling a little bit now uh, but just give me a little more time uh, and I promise you uh, that what he has begun in me uh, will accomplish it until the day of, of Jesus Christ. You ought to tell somebody uh, every time they say something negative to you, uh, you ought to let them know enough is enough. Uh, that won't work this time. Uh, the last time you said I wasn't going to be nothing, but this time I've got a word in my spirit. Uh, I've got something to stand on. Uh, so enough is enough. Uh, don't count me out. Uh, don't count me out of the game. Uh, I'm going to be in when it's my time. Uh, I'm going to step through when it's my season. Uh, look at your neighbor and say, your neighbor, 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 uh, your season is about to change. Paul began with chapter 4, verse 1, saying, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, uh, we do not lose heart. He then uses it again in verse 16, the A cause. Therefore, we do not lose heart. What I want to say to you on today, and I'm closing, is that you can't lose heart. You can't lose focus. You can't lose determination. You can't lose on thinking that it's not going to come to pass. Because if he promised it to you, you got to stand on the promise. 
Everyone standing, everyone standing. You feel like your time has been passed. God said, it's still, I'm still working. As long as you got breath in your body, God says, I can still work. As long as, long as I got a willing soul, a willing heart, I can still work. As long as I can see hands lifted up and mouths filled with praise, I can still work. Don't ever think. Give me some music behind me, please. That God has forgotten about you. Delay is not denied. Your season just ain't changed yet. But I prophesied this word on last week. Y'all remember that your season is getting ready to change. God would not cause everything else to change in season and not change yours. Leaves change colors. Limbs will fall to the ground. But the word of God will stand forever. <laughs> Uh huh. Last forever. There is hope even in this. There is access even in this. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you. My strength and my redeemer. For my redeemer liveth. It's making intercession for me. Even if I'm standing in the pit. Yeah, there's still a promise made for me. He is, he was, and he shall be everything you need. Eyes closed, head bows. He did it for me. Say he did it. You ought to touch yourself and say, He did it for me. Just for me. Just for me. Yeah. Jesus came and did just for me. Think way back. When you first accepted him into your life. Jesus came and did he came then just for me. and did it just for you. Matter of fact, when he formed you in your mother's womb and shaped you, and breathing into you the breath of life. You might not believe this, but it was already settled in heaven. There was a seal that was stamped on your life. And no matter how many times we've been distracted away from it, God still, he's just like a herder. that uses his staff <laughs> to tap you back in line. Just for me, he did it for me. <laughs> Father, we thank you now for your unmerited favor. 
thank you for doing it for us. That we can't be stuck at the perplexed. We can't be stuck in confusion. But you always make a way of escape. Let, let us see it with our spiritual eye so that it can manifest our, in our lives that our natural eyes will see it too. We thank you today because you're always faithful. And every promise belongs to us. Now, God, as we accept what you have done, have your way in our lives. Take us to where you would have us to go. We'll be so careful to give your name all the glory and all the praise. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Turn to your neighbor, say, enough is enough. Enough is enough. God bless you. Come on, bless the Lord. If enough is enough, you can do better than that. Come on, if it's enough is enough, you can do better. If you're making that declaration.